Hi, I'm Ben Montross with the State of Vermont Drinking Water and Groundwater Protection Division. This video is going to go through how to fill out a sampling plan form under the revised total coliform rule. Under the rule, every drinking water system needs to have an approved plan. This isn't a new requirement for communities and NTNC systems. It is a new requirement for TNC systems. This video is going to go through how to fill out the form and exactly what we're looking for. In order to fill the form out, you need two basic things. You need the form itself. There's two different versions. For those that serve systems serving 1,000 or less, or those for systems that serve over 1,000. We're going to go through the form for the system serving 1,000 or less in this video. You also need a map. You need a map of the water system that includes the source, all the system information, treatment plants, things like that, booster pump stations, and also have the routine locations identified and identify as much as you can for repeat sampling locations also. As you can see, this one is hand drawn, which is completely fine. It doesn't need to be done by a professional engineer. It certainly can be, but hand drawn, engineered drawings, or even an overlay on Google Maps or Google Earth where you hand draw on top of that where your lines are, are completely sufficient. So we're going to start with the basic system information. So as you can see here, we have a map. And on the map, it just says Green Hill School. This is a generic school. It's a hypothetical situation. It's not an actual system. You want to make sure the map has the system name and the WSID on it. So the system name is Green Hill School. So that goes in this box. WSID number is 12345. It's an NTNC. There's one service connection, one building. But this also says if there's only a few connections, also write the total number of available sampling taps. So if you look at the map and add it all up, there's, there's 20 total available sampling taps. It's a groundwater system, so check that box. And for system population, there's 300 kids. Pressure zones, there's one pressure zone. Everybody in the system is served off the well pump. There's no booster pumps in the system. There's no other zones. Everything's on the same pressure zone, so that's one. Dates of operation is not applicable. It's not a seasonal system. It's a year-round system. The system only has one distribution system, so you check the box there. If there are multiple distribution systems, you need to have a plan for each individual distribution system. And then you would identify here that's distribution system one on that part of the plan. All right, so just to walk through the map in order to get a, a sense of where they're sampling. You can see the well is here. The well goes into the treatment utility room and it follows this dotted line throughout the entire building. Now this is a school, but it could be an inn with different guest rooms or a hotel, something like that. So it, it's, hopefully it's representative enough to give you a sense of what we're doing. So you can see the dashed line goes through the hallway and goes in to the boys' room, the girls' room, the kitchen, the locker rooms, the cafeteria and gym. This is the first floor, this is the second floor. So this portion is on top of this portion. So you can see here is where the water line goes up into the second floor. So when picking sampling locations, you want to make sure your, your samples are representative of the entire system. So the kitchen is a good place for that. People are going to be using a lot of water there, the greater chance of people drinking the water, and it's kind of centrally located. It's between a lot of the uses. So the, the kitchen is a really good place to start. So that we're going to make that the base. So that's going to be routine sampling location one. You can see that there's places upstream and downstream to sample from, which is what, which is what we want. We want to have a bunch of options. The second floor, there's a big science lab with a bunch of sinks. That would be another great place. It's representative of the entire second floor. And then we're also going to try the boys' room because that's a slightly different line. And again, you've got locations upstream and downstream. So when that's all combined, you can see where the water flows, you can see where the sampling locations are, you can see the upstream and downstream, and you can identify the number of sinks. So that's all what we want to have on this map. Now we're going to go through filling out the routine and repeat sampling location portion of the form. So as I said earlier, we're going to make the kitchen the base location. So we're going to put kitchen in here. We need to write a justification why. Why are we sampling at the kitchen? It's a central location. It's good samples upstream and downstream. And you know, you know, there's a lot of food prep, there's a lot of drinking, so it's going to be representative of a lot of the use. So you write that all in the justification column. Now we need to identify the repeat location. So we're going to start with the upstream location. So upstream meaning 
closer to the water. Swimming upstream is a little bit harder, so closer to the flow of water. So we've got the kitchen. There's the boys' room and the girls' room. So these, these four locations, which are upstream, you can notice that I'm not going to put in the drinking water fountains. We don't like sampling at fountains. The water comes up out of them and things can settle and, and be a little messy. So that's not a great place to sample from. So I'm going to put the boys' room, sink number two, sink number one, girls' room, sink number two, sink number one. Okay. So now we need some downstream locations. So downstream coming this way. So we've got the kitchen identified. So there's the boys' locker room. So there's two sinks in each of the in the boys' locker room and two sinks in the girls' locker room. So we're going to say boys' locker one and boys' locker boys' locker one and two and girls' locker one and two. Okay, and that's it for the base location. So now. Our second routine location we said is going to be the lab. We're going to do sink two in the lab, so it's kind of the middle of those two sinks. So we're going to put lab, sink two. Justification, pretty central location up in the upstairs. It's going to probably be a lot of water use, and we know, you know those lab sinks, this one is actually a smooth nose faucet, so it's a really high quality faucet to be sampling from. So, in order to take repeats upstream, we're going to go back up the flow of water this way. So we've got lab sink one, and you've got the teacher's lounge sink. And following the flow back this way, you've got also everything downstairs. So where it connects downstairs, there's the boys' room and girls' room. So you can just put, maybe just try one of those. And maybe here, just put first floor, so we know the difference between the first floor and the second floor, because there's a second floor bathroom and a first floor bathroom. Okay. So in the downstream location from the lab, it's toward the end of the system, but it's not at the end of the system, so we've got one location there. So we're going to do lab sink three. You want to avoid sampling for routine samples at the end of the line, because then you can't go further. You want to make sure you sample toward the end of the system so you can go either side. So lab sink three is enough. So then sample location three is going to be the boys, second floor boys restroom. Justification area, or justification for that area is that it's high use. It's before the drinking fountain, so if it's, anything gets into the system, you can kind of maybe catch it before it gets into the, into the system further. And it's also before the teacher's lounge. So it's going to catch things as if it, before it kind of goes up into the second floor. So for upstream locations, you're actually going to go back downstairs to here. So you've got any one of these first floor bathrooms to pick from. So we'll, put, we'll fill out the boys' room sink one and two and the girls' room sink one and two. And these are all on the first floor. It's important to distinguish that. That way we're not getting them confused with those samples. So then for the downstream locations, you got everything this way. So you've got the teacher's lounge sink and the three lab sinks. And that identifies all of your upstream and downstream locations for your three routine locations. Now we're going to fill out tables two and three, which is the monitoring schedule. Because this is a school and it serves under 1,000 people, it can sample quarterly. So we'll start with the quarterly schedule. So the base, you want to start with the base when you start with monitoring. So the base is the kitchen. And then you want to alternate your other locations. So you've got your lab sink. You go back to the kitchen. And then you go to second floor boys' room. Now, because these systems potentially can trigger monthly monitoring under the rule, we also need to fill this out. Community systems just fill this out. You don't have to fill out the quarterly because those systems aren't eligible to sample on a quarterly schedule. So all systems need to fill out the monthly schedule. So it's going to be the base, sample two, base, sample three, repeated throughout the year. Now we look to table four. If the system is served by groundwater or any mixture of groundwater and surface water, 
we need to identify where you can take source water samples. So there's only one well, so we just call it the main well. Source sampling tap location is in the utility room. And then it asks if it's a combined source sample. There's only one well, so you can just put not applicable. If there's multiple wells, and you can take one sample to represent multiple wells, you would write yes, depending on the number of wells you can sample. If you have more sources, feel free to either write below or add another piece of paper onto the bottom in order to capture all of your wells. So before you're ready to send it in, you walk through the checklist on the back page. Make sure there's a map including all the necessary information, including the sample locations, water system information, the water system name, WSID, all the necessary information. Also make sure all the required tables are complete. Make sure there's the routine sample locations identified with the justification for why you're sampling there and the repeat locations within, within either five connections upstream or, and five connections downstream of this original routine sample. Make sure you also fill out the monitoring schedule portion. Every system needs to fill out the monthly portion of the form the quarterly systems, so the groundwater, non-community that serve under 1,000 that are open year-round are eligible for quarterly monitoring, so make sure that's filled out correctly. You want to make sure you make a copy of this for water system records. It's no good if you send us the only copy. Make sure you have a copy to refer to. And then make sure the form is signed by either the owner or the administrative contact of the system. Make sure it's signed and dated and they identify who they are on the form. Once it's complete and you've worked your way through the checklist, send the form and the map to the division that the contacts identified. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this answered some questions and cleared a few things up and kind of make submission of this form a little easier. Check out the video description box below for additional information. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at any time. Thanks for watching.